let me share my slides quickly. And um, yes, so we're going straight into it, right? Um, let me bring out my chat box so I see it. Oh yeah, and Olawande says she's so pumped for this session. I'm pumped too, so let's do this. <laughs> So yeah, we're talking about the financial secrets of the millennial woman, um, of the wealthy millennial woman. Um, one thing I would say is that when it comes to money, the rules, the fundamentals still remain the same, but the expressions are different as you go through life, right? So um, whatever you hear here, if you put it into practice, it still be valuable. Even when you're in your 60s, when you're in your 70s, it's still the same thing, but the expressions, the opportunities will change over time. Yeah, that being said, um, okay, here, yeah, this is my pretty face. <laughs> my name is Ola. I'm a security trader turned financial educator. I'm the founder of the Money Week Club. You can check it out online. I'm a public speaker, um, a financial education YouTuber. Um, I'm a CFA charter holder, like we've talked about. Um, companies I've partnered with in terms of speaking or training, um, ACCA, Nyrometrics, NGX, how, how finance, you know, um, and then where I've been featured, yeah, major news agencies um, have featured my conversations around the economy and finance. Um, and my expressions, I have the club, like I mentioned, I have my YouTube channel, I do personal finance training and workshop facilitation. Um, for your companies, I help with financial wellness programs. Um, I help also with creating strategy for small investment clubs, and then I do consulting for financial literacy. That's what I do right now. Like, okay, and then so updates the my profile that was mentioned. I'm, I just left my nine to five. So this is what I do right now, like full time, morning till morning. <laughs> so yeah, now let's go on financial secrets. So this is something that is very, very important. And it's it's something that I think a lot of women need to think about more often. Um, and I know that it's almost normal when you think about something that makes you uneasy, you just say, you know what, I want to be happy. So let's just ignore it and let's move on to something else that makes you happy. But it's something that you can't escape because if you ignore it now, the impact of that ignoring will come up later. It's just, it's just given. Right, so this is Chi Chi, right? Um, at her graduation in 2009. Right after graduation, she went for service, you know, normal one year NYSC. And when she was serving, she was taking bus, she was shopping at Terio Shoe Market, she would go to Ibadan or your for um holiday, right? She takes a break from work, she travels to see her aunts in Ibadan. You know, that was a holiday. And for lunch, she would go to he has something, you know, by the side. She'll send the cleaner with a bowl, you know, those paroles in banking, right? And that's what she would do. And then fast forward to a year later, she became a full staff and she upgraded. She started going from, she moved from going to Ibadan to going to Ghana. I mean, Ghana is just down the road. You don't need a visa, just a flight, you are there. You can stay in a budget hotel, you know, and you start shopping at ASOS because I mean, it's too stressful to go to Ted Show markets, right? Um, and then sometimes at this point, it's like, okay, I can't just be taking bus all the time. It's hot, the sun is through my skin, stuff like that. So she'll do a mix. Sometimes she'll take bus, she'll try to take cabs, she'll do Uber, you know? And then sometimes she'll take care, care, like whatever. But whenever she's in the mood, she will just enter her car, call her Uber, and she's on the move. And then she upgraded from, instead of doing the, he has something <laughs> down the road, she now started shop, uh, having breakfast at TFC or having lunch at TFC, you know? So the rice that will probably have been like maybe 500 naira with the mama something. By the time she had the rice and her chicken and had some uh, moi moi to the side, it's like maybe one five, two K ish. And she's doing that every day. And this is the upgrade. Like she's cool. She's upgrading her life. She's growing. Now fast forward to 10, 12 years later, she's a boss. She's earning um, one, um, 15 million. Um, now she goes to Dubai on vacation. She's she's buying Louis Vuitton bags. Um, she has a chauffeur. She has a cool car on credit. Um, 
that same mama that she started with, um, she has moved to knock by Alara. The same mama like, is now like costing times 10 of what it will cost. Or even, so let's go from 500 to what, 7K, 8K, that's even more than times 10. But she's a boss babe. This is where she should be seen. Please, I want to see in the chat. <laughs> Gourmet Amala, I love it. And um, who can relate with this? Like, if you can relate with this evolution of living, of lifestyle, um, can you relate with this? I want to see in the chat. I relate. Just tell me, right? I relate. I relate. I relate. I I can relate. This is something I've seen happen. I want to see it in the chat. You guys had energy a few minutes ago now. I relate. Yes. Reality check. It's something that happens. In fact, it's almost normal because, I mean, based on your status, how can you be a manager? How can you be this or that? How can, how can, how can, you know, and we make these changes, which are not bad because, I mean, life is, 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 is important to live life, right? But then there's something, um, it's a law that states that expenditure will always rise to meet income, meaning that um, if you think back, to what you were earning 10 years ago, to what you were earning five years ago, right? To what you were earning two years ago, you've gotten that massive promotion. You've gotten that, oh, I've moved from this company to Amazon. I've made all those massive breaks. But apart from this season where inflation is really bad, who would agree with me that a lot of times you get that salary bump, but... You just adjust to it in terms of your spending. Sorry, someone needs to mute themselves. Um, you just adjust your spending, right? And you don't necessarily have anything to show for it apart from the fact that you have cooler bags um, or cooler clothes or you can take a more expensive car loan, you know, things like that. So if you have done a Corolla before, now you're doing a Lexus, you know, things like that. So basically your pay will increase, but your lifestyle will increase along with it. And you don't have anything tangible apart from bags and hair to show for it. It happens. It is almost more normal than the person who has something to show for it. It is pervasive. And this is something that we need to address. But the end point really is that your heart skips a bit at the thought of losing your job walking away from a bad relationship, any emergency bill, right? So anything, so what you're doing is that, yes, you are working hard, which is the painful part. You are working hard. You are making money. Your, you are, your boss is pissing you off, but you are staying there just because you want to make this money. But after you make the money, you make that money for five years. You don't still have anything to make you able to walk away from this annoying job and get a breather and do something else but you know that you can do something else you understand or you're running a business and even though the business is doing well you just can't say you know what i am going to go on a holiday for two weeks just to rest my head just to bring down my blood pressure why because all the money you've been making has been going to gold right <laughs> all the money you've been making has been going to ashwabi or worse all the money has been going to places and you can't even say this is where the money went. Please, can we relate? I, I know I've seen a lot of I relate, but I relate times two. <laughs> I want to see it, right? Because this is something that happens to a lot of women, right? And I'm going to talk about it. Now, the first thing is that it starts with how you see money. Um, when I say it starts with how you see money, for some people, is that when you see money, it's time to shop. For some people, is that my money also goes to broke boyfriends. <laughs> For some people, it's time to, when you see money, it's time to shop. Like, like once the money hits you like this, it's like, let's enter town. For some people, is that, ah, money has come. But let's just keep it all. Let's keep it. Let's just be looking at it. Let's not go anywhere, right? And for some people, they've tried all sorts of things. They've tried keeping it, they've tried saving, they've tried giving, they've just been burnt. When it comes to money, everything they do is like, shoot a bullet and it comes down, right? And, but then the question is, why do you see money that way? We all know right from wrong. 
And it's not even about me coming to say, oh, you know you should, or you should save, like you don't know. You know you should save. You know that emergencies come up and that's why they are called emergencies. But the question is, why do you have the relationship that you have with money? And you have to sit down and unpack it. Who behaves the way I behave? <laughs> Where did I see this? What, you know, for some people, it's something as simple as I had a friend who was in school. Like I have someone that said that I had a friend when, when she had a friend when, when she was in school who went shopping, right? And like a week after, so she bought new clothes and a week after she died. So for her, it was like, once I buy an outfit today, I must wear it the following day, right? And the question is why? Because if you must wear it the following day, it means that whatever cool thing that I could have kept for a proper event or whatever, you've rocked it so that when the proper event comes, what happens? You have to shop again. And it's a reality. So the question is, when you see money, what do you really see and why? Now, that is your homework. Write it out somewhere. What do I see? When I see money, what are the emotions that come through my head when I see money? And where is it coming from? That one we cannot answer here. You will have to think about it. So let's go to the money secrets, right? Um, spending without saving or investing the recipe for disaster bills will always be there. <laughs> I've learned this the hard way. I'm automatically happy. <laughs> so yeah, the first secret is money is a tool. Now, like I, I, had just, I just talked about what do you see when you see money, right? Um, for some people, money is let's just let, let's enter town, right? Let's 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 make everybody happy. Once everybody's hailing me and I'm spending, I'm all right. But money is a tool, right? It all depends on how you use it. Now, what do I mean by that? Yes, money can buy happiness. Money can buy good health. Money. When you say money can buy good health, for example, money can help you pay for a gym. Can help you get a trainer. Can help you get a dietitian. You know. Money can make you not need to leave your house at 5 a.m. in the morning so you can actually take a walk in the morning to preserve your health, right? But it's how you use it. Now, I'm going to give a scenario which a lot of people don't realize when it comes to money and finances, managing your finances. Now, when you work, we talked about how was the day at work. Um, some people had like an interesting day. Some people had stressful days. Some people are wondering, is it the same work we're doing? But you all work, right? or you run your business, at the end of all your work, you have something that is called the fruits of your labor, your salary, your revenue, your sales, your profits, it's yours. Now, think of a fruit. You have this apple here, right? When you finish eating the apple, what do you have? You have the seed. Now, what happens with that seed is that, like I always say, there's so many creative things. Now, if you Google or you go on YouTube and you say, what's... Um, beauty therapy can I use apple seed for I can bet you that you will find something so some people can decide that oh this is seeds of these are the seeds of my apple I'm going to keep it on the table and just leave it there or I'm going to toss it in the bin or leave it on a or leave it on in a cup right or for some people to say I'm going to use it for some smoothie I heard that it has extra it's extra packed with nutrients or for some people they'll say they'll use it for their face or something right so and as some people they will say, this is a seed. This is what I'm supposed to be planting in the ground, right? And they plant it. Now, what happens with planting? If you're in Lagos, for example, you know that we don't grow apples in Lagos. We grow apples up north towards Joss, yes? Or you grow apples maybe in America, maybe in Washington, right? There are places where there's, it's conducive. The land is conducive. The environment is conducive, right? But say we, we are in Joss. We take this apple and you plant it behind your house. When you give it time, what happens? A tree would grow. It will start with looking like nothing has happened. After a while, you have like a short shrub. You have like a massive tree without fruits. And then after a while, the fruits will come out. And then after a while, the fruits will be ripe. What am I saying? You have your salary. Out of that salary, you are not supposed to eat everything or turn everything into some beauty experiment. There's a part that is a seed for the future. That if you plant in the right environment, right? It will give you more seeds, more, more apples and more seeds for the future. Now, that is one thing that anytime you have money in your hand, you're asking yourself, am I eating the fruit or am I eating the seed? There is a portion that should be a seed. Now, yes, you might think of it from a religious perspective 
and seeds and giving. But yes, even apart from that religious perspective, in terms of your actual use and how you deploy it, deploy it are you ending the conversation with a meal or a bag or are you putting into things that have a chance when given time in the right environment to produce more for you in the future? So whenever you are looking at your salary from now, whenever you're looking at your pay, think about it like this. It is a tool. What are you using it for? That's the question. The next secret, and if you if you if it's you are feeling me, if it's making sense, please let me know because this silence, I'm not sure. Or if you guys can hear me before I've gone silent and I will not know, or network is not working or something, right? So the next secret is money is called currency for a reason, right? Um, when you think about currency, we're talking about something that moves, right? It's not designed to stay in one place. And if you notice, it doesn't really stay in one place. Last, last, if you leave it in your bank accounts, inflation will come and eat it there. Money is not designed to stay in one place. Now, I've talked about it being a tool. If you now understand that it's not designed to, to, for it to be in one place, then, and you also have heard about the whole um, investing or planting it as a seed for a chance to the future. Just understand that every time you leave money idle in the bank, what you are doing is like that apple seed. You are leaving it on the table. Guess what? What will happen after a while? It will dry up. It will shrivel. It will become useless. That is inflation. Straight up. Just leaving your money idle. So I understand. And this is where women, what happens to women a lot, right? Women always are like, ah, let me just keep my money and let me be seeing it. Or let me buy gold, <laughs> you understand? Which, they like here not there because there's a way to buy gold so you can actually trade it off later. But there's a way when you buy gold, you rocked it, you rocked it. It's secondhand value, you understand, right? So understand that when it comes to money, money is a tool. That is why you're supposed to turn it over. That's why, in your business, you don't say I made, I I maybe let's let's use something like drop shipping, which is clear. Drop shipping is that you buy from you somebody places an order, you go and pick the order from somewhere and deliver to the person. You don't say that oh I've made money today and there's a fresh order and there's still time for work. You won't do the transaction again. You will keep turning it over, or you are a distributor and someone comes today. The market that you sell for a whole month, someone picks it up in one day. Will you say that, ah, I've sold for the month, let me go and rest? No, what do you do? You go and place a fresh order and suck up again. Money is not designed to stay in one place. It's designed to be turned over. So every time that you carry your money and you drop it in one place, put under your pillow, blah, 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 inflation will eat it up. You are losing value. Money is called currency for a reason. Now, when it comes to debt, People run away from debt, but I'll tell you that debt in itself is boring is not bad, right? Um, people borrow to go to um, Ivy League universities and people borrow to, sorry, we, we might do a recap at the end so we don't, don't disturb the flow in Damola. Um, people borrow to go, for example, to an Ivy League school and then after, and then after the Ivy League school, they get like one massive times 10 job, right? You get. The question is, what are you borrowing for? But some people who borrow, go for the school and then not, not what's it called, not job value, not be aware of the fact that there's basically behind me, right? Or some people borrow to buy a car that they don't need. When the money they use as down payment could have bought a car they could have lived on, right? And put themselves under pressure right people also borrow to get to buy houses you can buy a house today let's say you buy the house for one million random random example right and you take a loan of 800k the truth about it is that in the three five years of you paying down that loan the property can move from a valuation of 1 million to 2.5 it's an investment if you didn't borrow, you won't have gotten it at, at that one million at the time when you did. So it, it's always about what you take the loan for. The most important thing is one, 
is the thing they are put they're taking a loan for going to bring back money for you if it is then it's then it is good it's called leverage but if you are borrowing like meaning that you see a bag that you like right um it costs five thousand pounds it is a really beautiful bag and the bag is not going to give you any value if you buy that bag today firsthand and you need to get rid of it. You'll probably be selling it to someone at maybe 4K at the best, right? If at all. Except if it's like a Rolex that has some like historical value over time kind of thing, which you really need to take, waste a lot of time for you to get that value. But what am I saying? What are you borrowing for? Is it going to give you money or is it going to take, is it going to, eat, is it going to give you additional capital in the future or is it going to take away from the capital you have? Because when you need to pay back, what's going to happen is that the money you've made, you will have to use out of it to pay back. So, right. So let's not run away from debt, but let's be true to ourselves. We know what we should not borrow money for. We know. So let's, let's, let's do the right thing, right? Let's really do the right thing. Let's, let's not take clothes on credit. As long as you have clothes you are wearing, you don't need to take clothes on credit. You don't need to buy bags on credit. You don't, all those like beauty items, stuff like that, you don't need it. And we know like jiggers, it's not like I said, I'm telling you something you don't know. You know, you know that you don't need it. Then secret four, time will always tell, right? Your private actions or inactions will be obvious if we all wait long enough. Let's not lie that we know that uncle that is forming like he has money but does not really have it. You get, let's not, you get, let's not lie that we don't know that parent that was, that had money before, but money's not really there right now. So they are just being antagonistic, right? It, time will tell. So understand that you might be in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, um, based on percep my perception of demography for the her economic community. But you plan to live long. You pray to live long. If you really, really, really plan to live to that 80, 90, 100, 70 that you want to live to, then understand that your financial decisions right now counts for the future. Let's take it back to that planting of a seed and taking time for the tree to produce more, right? If you don't plant the seed at the right time, right? You can come to a point where you are hungry for apples and it is not yet time for the tree to produce. Or the tree, you can't plant anymore. <laughs> you do get, it's too late. Do you get? So let's be intentional. Time will always tell. And I also want to give another scenario when it comes to time will always tell. Um, we all know that we should save full stop. I'm not, you're not, I'm not going to, try to beg you or try to convince you we both know we all know that we should not spend everything that we earn we know right so let's say for example you are able to save 50k every month um for 10 years you would have saved 6 million for for 20 years that saved 12 million for 18 years that saved, for 30 years that saved 18 million let's not lie to ourselves the way life is is that if you start with 50k as an entry level person Last, last, if you are consistent with somewhere in the next one, two, three years, one, one job change, one whatever, you will bump up to being able to do 100K. So if you start with 50K today, that's the minimum you would ever be as long as you keep on the journey. You might have hiccups, so, but that's the minimum you would ever be. We agree. I know we agree, even though you're not saying this in chats. Now, let's think about the whole seed, fruit, time conversation right if that same 50k you were saving it diligently and in the first year you saved 600k and that 600k you invested it at 10 percent. 10 percent, if you are in nigeria is not hard to get right in terms of investment return per annum right so at the end of the first year you have 60k on your 600k and then you're not adding that 600K today. And then the 600K plus the 60K plus the actual 600K, you gather them together and invest for another year at 10%. Now, what happens is that after 10 years, instead of this 600 that you had, instead of this 6 million that you had, you have 9.5. And instead of this 18 million, in 30 years' time, just adding 600K and reinvesting at 10, you would have 98 million. 
people, you agree with me that if you have a retiree parent that has 100 million right now, as much as you say inflation, this, inflation, that, inflation, that, 100 million is still money. Do you guys agree with me on that? So you can see that there are things that you can do. You can see that it is in your hand. Inflation, economy, someone was talking about micro and our decisions and macro and government decisions, right? Even if it's just 10%, let's not lie to ourselves. We always say, oh, it's 5%, what's the big deal? It's 10%, how much is that? Inflation is 18, what's the point? Hello, if you leave your money at zero, you get zero. It's only what you will get is what you worked for, straight up. When you add just 10%, which you can literally get any, like it's not hard to get, right? In terms of returns, see what you can do. And then if you have the person that can do 200K a month, guys, in 30 years, you have almost 400 million. What a wahoo. And you can run the calculation yourself. So you know that I'm not giving you something that you cannot calculate yourself. I've explained how to calculate it. So yes, like I said, time will always tell. Your action or inaction, time will tell. And that's also why you have, you can have like two people working in the same office, civil service. One person gathers gather money together, buy one land, gather, buy another thing. You know, another person just collecting salary. And then at retirement, one person is like, oh, I have this land. I have this, this, I sold this land to pay for this for my child. Meanwhile, you are borrowing around the whole place after retirement. That is what happens. Time will tell. So secret five, return is always a reward for risk. Guys, we all, we all know what we do in terms of risk taking, right? You see all this, uh, double your money. Uh, somebody is taking your money to go and do one something, 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 something. See, it plays on our greed, right? But if they told you that if you steadily do your 10% gently, you will get to a good destination, right? So it's not like you are optionless. Let me tell you for a fact that when someone's offering you 30%, there is a reason. Nobody really wakes up as a business. Think about it. When you run your business, why would you say you would give someone such a high return if there's no risk? If there's nothing that, okay, let me make this an attractive so this person would want to stay with me because there's a chance that this thing may not go. But if it's sure that I'm giving you this money, you're giving me this money, I can show you that it's sure. What would you do? You bring down the rates. So why do we think that there's free lunch? There's no free lunch. Don't disturb yourself. So financial planning is what gets you from that young babe to the daddy chilling by the beach. So sorry, I used the guy, but you get the point. <laughs> chilling by the beach kind of life, yeah? And it covers setting your goals, budgeting, saving, investing, retirement planning, estate planning, risk management and insurance. Now, let me tell you, the only thing I'm going to focus on here because it's really broad is goal setting. A lot of women do not have financial goals. If I ask you, where do you want, what, what, is, what do you want your network to be in five years time? I can bet that 90% of this community will not give me an answer, a clear cut, articulate answer. But we go to the office, we set smart goals at work, we set targets, we set we want to do this. We'll not start working back, but we don't do it for ourselves. And even when we want to do it, we'll do it for, I want my child to go to private school in London. I want my child to do this, 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 but you've not sat down to calculate. Okay, this private school in London, what is the financial value? How do I work towards it? Why do I say that? Because if you put your goals in perspective, a lot of the gold you are buying, you will not buy it. If you put your, I want to achieve this, this is important. I want my network to be 100 million. And it says 10%. How much do I need to put away every month? By the time I get to that 100 million, what does it mean for me? I will be able to do this, the house kind of stability. I'm free. I can take a walk from the office. I can do a one year annual sub, sub, one year sabbatical. It has like tangible meaning to you. I take, I tell you for free that I see all those shopping, all those buying bags you don't need. You will not do it. Nobody needs to tell you. So the one thing out of all these things that I will tell you that you a lot of people miss is that they don't set their goals. There is a quote by Muhammad Ali that he says that his eyes, his hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. So you don't set a goal for yourself. You are just, you are just wondering. It's just like you are, you, you enter your car, you say Google map, yeah, Google be taking me. Google will say, where are you going? Yeah. Does that make sense? 
I think it does. So financial planning is knowing where you are right now, knowing where you're going and knowing what to do to get there. This is a short session. So I really can't like unpack, unpack all these things. It's really broad. There are, there are different layers to it. And that's what I do like when I'm doing my personal finance trainings and stuff. There, it's, there are different layers to it, right? So, but the most important thing you need to do is cash is king. Um, liking cash to that seed, you can't, you can't invest the apple, if you get what I mean. It's the seed that you can invest, right? Um, so if you invest the apple, it becomes manure, <laughs> you understand? So when you say cash is king, is that there's a part of your cash that you're supposed to use as the tool. If you don't have it, even if you want to borrow for a mortgage, right? They'll tell you to bring your down payment. Do you understand? So if they're going to give you, if they're going to ask for your down payment, it's cash. What you want to do, you have to, so, some parts of it has to come from you. So you need to make cash available for you to be able to invest. Like you can't invest air. Let's think about it. Intentionally increase the gap between your income and your expenses. You need money to make money. And it's natural everywhere in the world. It's not just about Nigeria. Inflation is every Inflation is biting on everybody's value right now, globally. So don't even think that it's just a Nigerian situation. It's not. Um, don't leave it to faith also. Do something. Like I talked about the whole 50K thing, right? If you don't have 20 million in your accounts, you can't be saying 50K that amounts to 20 million over 10 years is too small. You don't have it. You are, if you are saying it's too small for money you don't have, then you are living another person's life. I don't even understand what I mean. It's when you have it, then you can now say that 20 million is small. But when you don't have it, you can't be using your mouth to say it's small. You're just deceiving yourself. Better take what you can, do what you can where you are, right? And more opportunities will come for you to get more. But you see that, what is this in my hand? That is the beginning of your problem. Do something, start from where you are. In conclusion, I always say there are two things you can't outsource in life, your health and your finances, right? Nobody can jog for you. Nobody can eat vegetables and you will feel it in your skin or your health or your blood pressure, right? Unfortunately, people think that finances is something they can outsource, but no, you can't make, somebody cannot invest or structure your life the way you know it, like, and with your own goals in line, right? You can't outsource, you can get help, the same thing, where, same way you get a coach, right, for your exercising and stuff, but it's your responsibility. You have to engage with your finances. You have to be intentional to create your desired future. Like, not everybody, more people have it harder than the people that have it good. They say there's 1% of the world's population, 2% that carry the wealth of the bulk of the whole world. Do you understand? So don't think that because you are starting off on a shaky footing, then let's just hope, right? If you read people's stories, you see that people fought through really challenging situations to get to where they are. So if that is where you are, if that is the situation that you are in, then you are not alone. People have done this before you. People have had to do it. So get up and be intentional. Start with what you earn and start now. No matter what it is, there's all there's beyond the actual saving and, and saving a significant amount. There's also the culture of it that you need to learn because if, for example, you earn 200K a month right now and you're saying, oh, when I get to 1 million, I'll, begin, I'll start saving. I can bet that you might not be able to save when you get to 1 million. Because let me put it into context. If you're a Christian, for example, and you move from 200K to 1 million, your tax is already 100,000, 10%, right? Now, what that means is that the way money will be going in from your pockets will be shocking, first of all. It will be a different ball game overnight. So I have literally seen someone move from like 150K salary to like $4,000 in one, you know, the way all this sex stuff, right? And by the time she was done, she was spending $3,000 in one, three, five. And I'm like, but you were living on 200K. She's like, she doesn't even understand herself. That's why she's worried. And she came on as a client and, she, and I had to unpack. We had to break down. We had to set limits. Just start unwinding because like, ah, there's money. Let's do this. You know, it's normal. It's almost it's it's actually very normal but you have to do something different to get a different result a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step you can do it and you can reach out to me if you need any support i'm available on instagram 
YouTube and LinkedIn as Ola Oladili. Thank you very much. Wow, uh, you've, you've literally taken my breath away. I'm sure there are people on this call who are blown away, just like I'm blown away. At some point, I felt like you came ready to attack me for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what I did, uh, but in a good way. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for the session. I, I have oh. questions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know... Uh, the audience also have questions, right? Uh, so if, if you have questions, just use the hand raise icon and I'll bring you, I'll bring you up. Uh, Yoma already has a hand raise. Uh, but while we wait for more more hands, you know, so something that you said that struck me, you said that and then um brought it up again. And I was just wondering, but how what really happens that once your income increases, the expenses, is it that? They send a memo to them. They just call them. You know, it's just like that. Our in local parlance, village people, they just hear and they are heard, and all of a sudden, they are like, ah, just like you said, but I was living on this. The world did not end. This one has increased, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's. I don't understand. I don't know how to explain. Whoever made that law, you need to go and beg that person to remove that law. <laughs> So it's I normal mean, human nature. It's not actually mm -hmm. normal human nature. Why do I say so? Because, for example, there are a lot of things that right now you want. There are some things that, let's say, for example, you're driving a Corolla, you're a guy, you want to drive a Lexus, right? It's your dream car. The truth about it is that those desires are already there. Or maybe you have... There are two sides. Maybe you have family members that have been insulting you and you're like that. When I make money, I am going to do something that everybody will start respecting me. So what usually happens is that a lot of these things are already, in, already planted in our hearts to do, but we don't have capacity to express. So when you now get to a point where there's cash or I'm working in a company that will give me a car loan to cover a Lexus, why not if not when this is my dream car so this is why these kind of sessions are good so it helps you tell yourself that okay what are my goals in the order of what is important where would i put this car over going for a master's in two years time or over i want my child to go to a particular type of school that's why i really stopped to talk about goals right because if you had set a goal when you were earning 150K and for you to achieve that goal, you needed to be putting away 200K and you get a job that allows you to put away 200K, subconsciously, you will know that that 200 k is, is going there. But because you have not set a destination for Google, you will just be going anyhow. So that's why these sessions are good. That's why financial planning is good. That's why having goals is also very important. And I'm sure you can relate. You probably have, have one friend somewhere who was like, by the time I work for five years, I should have had this, 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 this. And the person will not change clothes. The person will not wear shoes. The person will, when you go out, the person will be like the broke person. Do you understand? The person will mm -hmm. be doing all the things they can do to hustle to make sure they don't spend so much. Why? Because they have put something in front of themselves. I'm not saying don't spend. I'm not saying, I'm definitely not for, not saying that, right? But it's also that in your spending, you put it in the right perspective. Mm -hmm. So I said two things. The major thing is one, they don't, you don't have a goal. You not set your goals. That, in fact, I think that's the major thing. <laughs> You've not yet set your destination. Once you set your destination, every other thing begins to align. Awesome. Uh, thank you. I think I'll, I'll go to the audience question. I think you also gave us a shout out uh, when you spoke about savings culture, because uh, uh, that is what we are trying to drive as the economy. And we uh, launched the app where we are helping uh, members of the community to, to save easily, automate saving, just automate it and go and sleep and continue. Saving. So thank you for that shout out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cut yeah. that part out. And <laughs> um, thanks. So for those who don't know, we have our app on iOS and on Android. Uh, 
can also check us on our website to to learn more. So, uh, Ihoma, please unmute and ask your question. Okay, hi everybody. Um, good evening, Ola. Thank you so much for your session. I like I appreciate the simplicity of it because most times when people have conversations like this, there's a lot of words and terms that fly over people's heads, but you really brought it down to a level we understand. So that's good. Um, so my question is this. With the whole saving and the investment, when does it ever end? Okay, so if I set a goal now for maybe 10 million in 30 years and I get and I surpass that goal, do I set another goal or can I rest and say, ah, okay, I've tried to? Is it something I'm going to keep doing for the rest of my life? Because I think that's why people actually say you only live once or you can't kill yourself because it's just on and on and on and on when is it okay for me to say that okay oh, i've tried this i need to rest now <laughs> so that's that's my question i don't know if you understood but yes i, I understand I your question um so it. so when you say financial freedom financial freedom is the ability for you to set up a structure such that you don't need to work anymore, right? And you'll be funded. So if you think about that apple tree, what really happens with that apple tree is that if that's all the apple tree that you ever plant and you take out all the fruits from that tree, guess what? Next year to produce again. So imagine if all you do, all you needed to do was eat apples, right? As in if apples was all, that you needed in life, right? Truth about is that if you actually set up the right structure, the fruits will keep coming annually. When people invest in stocks and they get dividends, some people, I know someone that gets two billion in dividend on a particular stock. Hello, dude does not need to work. Do you understand? So when they say financial independence retire early, what they are talking about is how you create a structure with investment that at some point you don't need to work anymore. So your working is now a choice. So you can actually say, I work six times, six months of the year and the other six months I'm doing charity work. But you need to put those structures in place. So if that's what you are trying to achieve, um, then you need to start working. So we set that as your goal. You decide, okay, how much do I need to have to be able to function like this? That's how it works. <laughs> But the question is, if you if you say you only live once, it's fine to say that when you are young. But you cannot be saying you only live once when you are 50. And how, trust me, I'm shocked that I finished my exams in 2013. That's almost 10 years ago. I still remember reading. And that's how time will fly. So you can't even say that you are in your 20s or 30s and you want to do, you only live once till you are 60. At 60, you are closer to being a grandparent. You can't be a burden to anybody. So don't, so don't, um, what's it called? Don't, um, don't just live for today, right? Because the reality is that you're hoping to live long. And that's apart from the fact also that your goals actually change. Like you can say 10 million now, and then by the time you hit 10 million, it's like, uh, for me to get 10 million, I can move to 100. For me to get 100, I can move to 1 billion, right? And there's that rush. As long as you are happy with what you are doing, it's fine, right? It's not, there's no, nobody's putting in any box. That's the freedom we are talking about. All right, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you, Ola. Um, you're really hitting us tonight with with the fire. Uh, Kemi, you can you can go ahead and ask your question. Oh, I see more hands coming up. Wow. Kemi, please, let's let's be brief also so that Kemi can, well, it's nine o'clock, okay. so I think this is borrowed time. Um, go ahead, Thank Kemi. you so much, Ola. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm driving, so the mess up might be in and out. Thank you so much for that uh, session. It was really insightful. My question is this, and I hope it's within context. Okay, so for people, 
sorry. <laughs> For people that live like outside of Nigeria, I find out that it's kind of hard to um to invest. Let me put it away. The rate I'm going to use this as an example because that's what I know. That's where I live. The rates are ridiculous. So if you say you want to like try to it, it's hard for you to ever say, oh, I'm going to get a 10 percent in US or any amount of money, like, well, reasonably so. So it's usually 0.1, 1%. So by the time you say, oh, I want to save on 1%, I kid you not, inflation will meet up before that money would even get to anywhere meaningful. It's just not meaningful. And... I'm so sorry. The the most common form of investment you hear is oh, invest in stock, invest in stock, invest in stock, and that kind of feels like okay, it's it's just one aspect of investment that can be covered. Okay, you're very correct. And yeah, I, can, I I hear you clearly. Um, so which is why when I was saying ten percent, I was saying in naira that for sure in Nigeria yeah. can get ten percent. However. Um, the truth about that, yeah, there are investment opportunities even in Europe, right? Um, even apart from stocks, there are other things that you can do, right? Um, not trying to sell, but in my investment community, we have people in the UK that are investing. There are things that you can do over time that will bring you money, right? But what the, the one that is easiest, like low hanging entry in those in, in and it's not peculiar to europe it's the same thing in most developed um, economies interest rates are low right but there are things that you can do that can earn you good returns in those communities in those economies right but you have to now wake up and say i need to take this thing seriously Julia, it's not just when i'm listening to people i need to actually yeah. sit down and start finding out what i can do but trust me there are things that you can do. There are investment opportunities that are not, um, they are not um, shaky. You get, it's not like you are taking on due risk. If you get what I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to give you wild, like MMM type stuff. No, like regulated stuff, but I don't want to go into all that because you start getting complex, but there are things that you can do. Okay, so is there like a way to like reach out to you after this? Because <laughs> trust me, yeah. I've made so much research and I just see that it's just stock. Even there are investment apps but what they invest in mostly are stocks. And you know, okay, for example, now the market is generally down. So it feels like you cannot even diversify your portfolio. So if there's a way like I can reach out to you after this class, that'll be great. Yeah, so yeah. Can... Ola Oladili on all platforms. O L E R Oladili. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, question okay. in the chat I was going yes. to. Yes, I also wanted to. How many minutes do we have? It's already past now. How many minutes are you? Oh yeah, we can do seven minutes. So we end at nine. Seven minutes. So at nine Okay, awesome. So um, please um, so before we take the chat, because the hands raised were up um okay. first before the okay. chat. So um, Stephanie, I hope I'm right with your name, please. Okay. Yeah, you're please, correct. Thank please, you so much. Please. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to confirm. Um, how do we set our goals? Because if I say I want to have ten million in the next two years, ten million might. Like because of inflation and all, ten million might become five million or something little. Like, how exactly can I set my goals? Like in next ten years or twenty years, I want to have let's say five hundred billion. Like, how do I how do I go about that? How do I set my goals? Your goals are your goals. Why does what does inflation have to do with your goals? Because if you say five hundred million in the next uh -huh. five years, and it's probably uh -huh. just it, it's it's no longer um valuable as in just like now, fifty naira cannot buy anything in Nigeria anymore, and for some yeah. yeah so, so to be honest, right, I think people um, over, like hold themselves back on things that they're, they're not really like processing well. The reality is that inflation will always be there. The reality also is that if you start working towards a 500 million goal, the reality is that two things. One, you'll probably get there faster. Two, by the time, by that timeline, you would have crossed it. Why? Because the process of getting 500 million in 10 years requires you to invest. And if inflation is working, is happening, and you are investing in the right things, those things would cover inflation over time. So a lot of times I realize that people, inflation, inflation that like people have not really processed the place of inflation or the, or the, the fact that inflation is like that kid brother that you can't escape from, if you get what I mean, right? 
because and it's not just Nigeria. Don't don't think it's Nigeria, which is why I said inflation in the UK printed at ten percent. We have not had that in what what they say is it seventy years. They said that they've not had it. Ten, just imagine, and then we are talking about the fact that in, interest rates in those climes are at zero point one. So inflation is is a given, right? But understand that in the process, the question is, how did you arrive at that 500 million? What do you think, what do you want to achieve with the 500 million? So if you are saying that you want to go to school, right? Um, and you want to go to Harvard. Harvard is two years. Harvard is, for an MBA is two years, $160,000, right? What is the trend in their price increase? How stable is it? Is it? So if you are putting the value, because I mean, what you do is that you don't just, you can actually put a monetary value, but when I say set your goals, I'm saying own a house in this area. What is my expected monetary value? What is my timeline? Um, have this net worth. What is my value? What is my timeline? It has to be real because guess what? Everybody wants to be a billionaire. But the reality is that the work, if you are earning 10K, the work you need to do to get to a billion you can't yet process it. So your first target should be 10 million in five years. Whatever it looks like, if you can't link him to 10 million right now, you can't be looking at it with disdain. Own your 10 million. Guess what? If you start working towards that 10 million, you will get there faster. Take it from me. So that's the mindset. Don't let things, don't say, uh, what's the point? That's what was the point because of inflation. I hear it so much. And I think it just makes people overwhelmed with what does not really doesn't really convert to anything it's not tangible it's like an unseen enemy that you're fighting so you're just dancing everybody's like, is this person okay that's literally how when people talk about inflation because it's, it's part of life really is and it's not just nigeria so what i would say is decide on what your goal really is not when your dream in kitchen Set your goal, your actual, I want to achieve Add this monetary well. value and timeline. Start with it. Focus. Focus on it first. Forget about inflation. Just focus on that one and see. You will beat it and you will cross it before you get to that timeline. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, almost out of time. So, Taiwo, um, keep it short, please. Um, hi, good evening. I really, really appreciated your um, me, um, everything that you've shared with us today. It was so insightful. Um, not to sound silly, but there was some times where you say some things that I was just like, word, 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 like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, yes, so, like, tell us. Um, but I, actually, I think you answered my question because I was going to ask something similar to what the last person just said about, you know, setting goals and how realistic we should be. And um, can I, so I do have a question. So for example, currently I do have a financial goal that I have set for myself. And I'm also currently based in the UK. And like you said, with interest rates and, you know, just all those issues, I find it really hard just, you know, trying to get to that financial goal with only these few mediums. So I don't know if there's anything you can um, advise on that. Um, okay, so two things. One thing, we've said, talked about investing, right? But there are two things, and I realized I probably didn't touch on that. When it comes to setting a goal, just the same way you plot, you put something in Google, and Google will say, go left, go right, go here, get on Lucky Equator, then turn left, and blah, 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 right? When you set a goal, you need to have a strategy for that goal, right? The reality is that I talked about 50K, 750K every month blah 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 and then you can increase to 200k reality is that if you set a goal for was it 19 million after how many years and you can increase from 50k to 200k you get there faster okay so there are two parts to achieving a goal there's one where investments provide return there's also a part where you actually have to work on increasing your pay okay those are two realities a lot of people actually are trying to achieve a goal on the wrong pay. What mm -hmm. happens when you set your goal is that you look at the what is the strategy to achieve this? Where am I? Sometimes your goal makes you understand that this job cannot, cannot cut it. Mm. If you look at what your MD is earning mm. and how long it will take for you to get to where he is to earn it, 
and mm. you look at what your goals are, it now tells you, okay, how do I upskill? How do I make those changes mm. that will help me to where I'm going? So, which is why I said, when you're setting a goal, don't just do what the next person wants. You have to be true to yourself because there's work attached to that goal. Mm. It's not just about, I have a goal, I put it on a billboard or I put it in front of me, I wake up every morning and I look at it. Yeah, you can look at it too, but it will work. Hmm. There's a season of work. When you work and you position yourself well, then you can rest. And Hmm. that's the reality. So there are two parts. One part I'll tell you is that there are actually investment opportunities. There are things that you can do. There there are actually, for example, in the UK, there are actually... um, real estate apps that split you know the way people flip real estate yeah. like yeah. they split the return they are regulated by your financial regulatory authority you just mm. log on to the app open your account and you can be earning 12 percent and mm. that's real estate mm. and it's and it's regulated and it's under the whole I'm not sure what it's called in the UK, but um, and Nigerian deposit insurance, like sorry, not Nigerian. There's a there's a deposit insurance scheme. So I think if you don't invest, if you invest, the, you are guaranteed. I think less than eighty thousand dollars, eighty thousand pounds. You get there's that uh, deposit insurance thing okay. under it uh, that covers it, right? So there's that's one thing. <laughs> you wanna start? There are plenty of things that you can do. Hmm. You can go invest with people, get lawyers, put it together, do a property, do Airbnb. You can do Airbnb and sublet. Why am I giving you strategy? I don't know. Because you <laughs> want to pay for it. Yeah? What do you think? <laughs> I to Ironic- pay for it. Well, ironically, I have heard this, these options that you have mentioned before. I think the problem was just, um, usually you would have to begin with a set amount that is large. And I'm, oh. I'm just, you know, working in nine. No. No? Okay. There's one that you can do $100. I, I think- I think I, I did stay. Sorry, I have it's to too, we get it too personal, have, right? Have to oh, sorry. Okay, <laughs> so sorry I have about to bring that. you back because it's um I, I must even uh appreciate everyone. We have 80 plus people still on the call by past <sighs> night. Uh interesting, right? So I'm um, tell I, I think we'll discuss with Ola to see if we can um, I'm so sorry time. to I'm sorry I just have one last question and you don't have to dig oh, wow. um deep into I'm so sorry I'm sorry just one last question sorry um the concept that you mentioned of the five of the 50k and then the 200k that's compounding interest right yeah would you mind just explaining more because I have heard about it but I just can't seem to really understand that concept okay okay so you have a pen and paper with you I will tell yes. you what you should calculate so let's say you have hundred thousand naira let's keep it in naira for okay. one year you invest it at 10%. Okay. Mm-hmm. You get 110. Okay. Right? Write it down so you can look at it again. Then okay. in year two, add another 100. So that's 110. Okay. And invest it at 10%. You'll get a number. In year three, add another 100K. So that's number you got and invest it at 10%. So that is compounding. Uh, hmm. yeah so that's where you so what you're doing is that you're not eating your return that is the rule of compounding don't eat your return reinvest, mm, reinvest it. it okay yes. yes okay all right i'll leave it there so that i don't take anybody else's time but thank you so much for your uh, well input. okay uh, awesome um uh, thank you ola thank you everyone uh, i think we we'll, would we'll stop there for tonight for questions um thank you like it's been awesome so guys you still on the call. So obviously, let's see how has it been. How are you feeling mm-hmm. now? Let's send the appreciation to Ola. Uh, so while we are doing that, uh, uh, so Ola, how do people get in touch with you? Okay. Um, easiest thing. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So you can drop a comment, um, or message, DM me on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Let me type it out so you don't mix. mix. Okay, well, it should be easy. Ola, Ola, Dele. Yeah. So that's, I put it in the chat. Ola, Ola, Dele. So, um, across all platforms. Across all platforms, exactly. I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really on Twitter. Yeah. What else? I'm on Facebook. I'm not really on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I, guess. I will see your messages uh, here and I will respond. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Also, some of these things like the compounding interest, blah, blah, blah. I've talked about these things on my YouTube channel. 
So it's all already on YouTube. You can check it out and learn a lot there. And I explain investments and personal finance in simple English. That's what I do. <laughs> yes, I think well, just like one of the uh, participants said, you use relatable terms, analogies, everything. So it was just like, yeah, this is me. Like, thank you, Uga. So thank you once again. Um, thank you to thank everyone you. who has joined us tonight. You can um, always keep in touch with us. Uh, for those who don't know uh, our website, um, www.economy.com uh, can download our app for us across uh, our app on iOS and Android is economy, the name, um, nothing nothing um, extra. Uh, follow us on social media and we do this. Uh, so um, all us agreed, so we'll upload this on YouTube. You can always go back to rewatch um, this session. Uh, in two days time, as always, it will be up and you can always go back to to what uh, I think we'll discuss it how to see the possibility of also getting um, the the slides across to you. So for everyone that joined the yes, you it will be uploaded and you get to to watch. And uh, we'll also discuss the possibility of having Ola again, um, just to touch base on some of the parts she had to um, skip because of time. Um, so thank you everyone. It's it's been an hour and 16 minutes of doing this and thank you thank you have a great night to rest um, so from me signing out for tonight see you in our next session thank you everyone good night thank you good night thank you good night everybody thank you good night